Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I asked you guys for 25 likes in the last video and you gave me 52. I'm all the way up. Oh man, that is nuts. You guys are the best. So we're going to do another video here. This video, run it up. 27 likes. 27 likes will get another upload. So let's keep her going. Without further ado, into the video. All right, guys, so today's video, we are talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly with the 05 to 09 Mustang V6s, the 4-liter V6, that is. So let's start off with the ugly, the worst things about these cars. So in my opinion, we're going to go straight to the back because this was the biggest missed opportunity for them. It is the single exhaust. Now, they for the GTs, they come with the dual exhaust. With the V6s, they come with the single rear exhaust right here. It would have been really nice for them to do the dual exhaust in 2011 with the 3.7s. They did go to a dual exhaust, but that would have been a really simple upgrade that would not have cost them much and it would have just made the appearance look that much better. Another thing that is absolutely ugly are some of the mechanical issues with this car, the flaws. So if you guys have seen my other videos, I've touched on a lot of these, the door cards. This is terrible. Oh! This is unacceptable what happens is the adhesive on the back over time just degrades and the leather pieces fall off this is what it's supposed to look like but as you can see it looks like a saggy diaper that one is falling off as we speak that is super annoying horrible quality control but it doesn't affect really functionality of the vehicle although this is almost kind of sharp because it's dried adhesive so not fun if you run your arm along that now here is one that is really frustrating and a very very common issue guys the car is on i don't know if you can tell what is the RPMs doing right there? And to show you it's on, it dips below. So these stepping motors on these cars are absolutely horrendous. <laughs> As you can see right there, I am at negative empty. Imagination. Everything else is working right now at the moment. And then my RPMs are about like 1500 RPMs too low. So that is super, super annoying. Now, thank God that this car has this button right here, the info button. So if we go over, oh, got to close the door. But if you want to check your gas, see how much you have left, 258. Because if I was going off of that, it does not move. So the stepper motors, for those that don't know, it's a little motor behind all these little gauges because they're all analog. And over time, just like the door cards, they give out. So this one stopped working. This one gets wonky. Sometimes it'll go all the way past high. This one will go up and down sometimes. And then the Speedo sometimes will get stuck at like 20. So all of these are super common issues. These are gonna go out. I mean, this car only has 55,000 miles, as you guys can see, but it is going on 20 years old. Or actually, no, holy cow, yeah. Yeah, almost 20 years old. So it's expected that certain things fail, but because of the quality, this is unacceptable in my opinion but it is what it is so let's talk about now the bad so the bad since we're still in the interior let's stick on this this car is plastic i mean anywhere you touch it's plastic no i'm not horribly offended by it being all plastic because at least it looks good so this car definitely they went for a retro styling but if you're looking for something that has a premium feel and this is a premium package car hence the leather seats and everything it is not i mean again plastic this is like some weird i don't even know what you want to call this but this is leather it really doesn't even feel like it i don't know it's probably some cheap material like a vinyl almost the seats are actually halfway decent those hold up really well but everything in the interior is a cheap plastic now a lot of times they sell like the carbon overlays so that's something that i would recommend that you guys do if you want to get rid of you know all the plastic feel um that'll really kind of spruce up the interior another thing that i see people say is bad is the shaker 500 system which i think is actually pretty good but i did want to mention that now on the 2005 to i believe the 2006 just those two years they do not come with an aux so that's really dumb because you have an aux bun here but there's no aux input there's not one in here and there's not one here so that's kind of dumb uh, for 2005, you'd expect that they would have at least an aux cable because that was popular then. Now let's go to the outside and talk about some of the bads. All right, guys, so moving on to the exterior, something that I consider is bad, they could have paint matched this. So on the GTs, the rocker panels are all paint matched. That would have been a really nice touch 
I just think that it would make the car look a little bit more modern, just looks a little bit cleaner compared to the, the plastics. Now, I do have the GT front bumper, but that is something that I think is bad from the factory, is these V6 front bumpers. They tuck in, it looks like a massive underbite. I'll put up a picture on the screen here. Um, the GT front bumpers are just so much more aggressive and you have so many more options in terms of just like lips and things that you could put on these cars, grills, hoods, all that stuff. So definitely I think the front bumper was a weak point on these cars. And then the rear bumper, like I said, was just awful, ugly, not a fan. Now, another thing that was bad is the stock exhaust. These cars are so quiet, man. They're like Teslas. If you don't have an aftermarket exhaust, you will not hear this car. Not at all. You could redline the crap out of it and you're probably never going to hear it. Another thing is the factory ride height. Now, this car is lowered an inch and a half on SR Performance lowering springs. I'll put up a picture. I'll find one of it at factory ride height on stock wheels. I mean, you could fist the gap on this with 20 inch wheels with a one and a half inch drop. You know, you probably have about a two finger gap front and back. And to me, this is kind of the perfect ride height where you can hit just about any speed bump or any obstacle in the road and you're going to be a-okay but it still looks very nice cruising so enough blabbering about the bad stuff let's talk about the good because there is a lot of good like i touched on earlier the bumpers the accessories guys there's so many mods you could do to these cars i mean these cars are what i consider cookie cutter cars anything you could imagine you could slap a piece on for example we did the servini's four inch cowl hood popped right in place put it in bolted on um Bullet grill pops right in once you hit the GT front bumper. That is one of the best mods I ever did to this car was doing the GT front bumper. It just looks so much more menacing. And then I always wanted the lip. I didn't like the lips on the V6 front bumpers. So once you tie that all in together, this car looks mean. Suspension on these cars, there's so many options. You could do lowering springs, you could do coilovers, you could do bags, and there's tons of different options for each of those. I like these springs because springs are a very cost-effective option and they're gonna give you a much better than stock appearance as you guys can tell there. Another awesome thing about these cars is the exhaust option. So this one has the SLP Powerflow exhaust. I'll put a little link right up here to my video showing you guys how this car sounds. It sounds so good with just an axle back. This car is 100% factory besides the axle back exhaust. So yours can sound just like this. Now, things that I can't show on camera is the reliability. Now, that's, to me, like the number one thing. That and the price point. So, in terms of reliability, this car has been damn near flawless. I've never really had any issues. Only done oil changes um, every couple thousand miles. And I barely drive this car. I bought this car almost nine years ago. And I've only put on, like, 14? Forget, no. Yeah, like 14,000 miles. That's nuts. So this is my daily. I just don't have a very far commute. And for some of those years, I work from home. So this thing has been an absolute trooper for me. Um, now, another thing that I forgot to mention on the bad, gas mileage. This thing does not do good on gas mileage. And I drive this thing like a grandma. I never get on it. Um, so that is kind of one downside is that it sucks on gas. But back to the good. Guys, if you're younger and you don't have a lot of money and you want something that's fun and peppy, this car checks all the boxes. Now, don't buy this car if you're looking to be the fastest person in your friend group because you're not going to be. Um, but if you want something that, you know, throw on a, an exhaust, sounds good, have fun. You can use it as a daily. You can go out, you can race like the light and just kind of have fun. This is an awesome car for the money. Now, let's talk about price point. These cars, the market, I see it all over the place, right? So private sellers, you can get really good deals on these cars. Dealerships tend to mark these really, really high. Uh, for example, this car only has 55,000 miles. If this was at a dealership bone stock without everything I've done to it, this would probably be like a 11 to $12,000 car. Now there's no way this car is worth that to be honest. 
Um, if I were to sell it right now, I'd take like 8,500 in a heartbeat. <laughs> but that just tells you, like, if you can find one of these cars with like 100,000 miles, which 100,000 miles on this motor is not a problem. These 4.0s are extremely tried and true. They've been tested. They've been out forever. Um, they go and go. I've seen several people with over 200,000 miles on them. The only thing you're really going to probably have to worry about is the thermostat housing or whatever. It's plastic from the factory. That goes. That's just, it's around like 350 bucks to replace it when it goes out. Or if you want to bite it before it happens, you can. Um, that's something I'm thinking about with this car because we're getting closer and closer to that mileage. I've heard around 75,000 miles is when it likes to go out. But other than that, guys, there's really no issues with these motors. I mean, they just go forever. So to me, that is like the ultimate big plus good news. Um, and then they do have lots of modifications. So you can do boost. Um, you could just do simple bolt-ons. You know, you could do intake exhaust. Um, you know, there's so many different little things here. Now, the 4.0 in terms of performance does have a fair amount, but it's not the same as like the V8s where there's like a billion options. The 4.0s, I see a lot of people always asking about like turbo kits. They don't really sell turbo kits for these. They have some on eBay. They're junk. I've seen so many people on the Facebook groups that order it and it's just a pile of crap. So if you're watching this and you're trying to get a ton of performance, do not buy one of those cheap eBay turbo kits. Go with like the Pro Charger Vortec kit from like American Muscle or Late Model Restoration, whoever sells it. Um, that's gonna be your best option. Or you could do like the Mod Box with like the Thunderbird Supercharger or whatnot. But there you guys go. I'm wrapping up. I'm going on forever. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button. Again, if we get hit 27 likes, we'll post another video. And I got a couple videos already filmed today. So we're going to be able to pump them out. I know I promised you guys I put them out the next day and I've just been swamped at work. So we got a couple locked and loaded ready to go. But if you enjoyed this video, guys, a like would mean a ton. Drop a comment down below and I'll catch you on the next upload. Peace out, guys.